song and call to work. No matter what 
unspeakably lovely and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples when they asked, Master, teach us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt God's name together. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. And let everything, everything that hath breath praise the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice be glad in it. Is there anyone in here that's glad to rejoice in the Lord? Is there anyone in here that's glad to be in God's house? Is there anyone here who is thankful unto God? Go ahead and open up your mouth and give our God some praise. We give God thanks on this beautiful and wonderful Sunday morning, we are excited and elated that you are worshiping with us today here at Trinity United Church of Christ, what we love to say is the greatest church this side of the Jordan. I want to take this moment, and if we have any guests with us today, this is your first time here at Trinity, I want to ask that you would stand and you might remain standing just for a few moments, uh, that we might honor you and just say thank you, the applause you hear. It's our way of welcoming you. And we are grateful that you are worshiping with us on this day 
We praise God for you, and we are honored by your presence, and we want you to take your time leaving, but in God's name, please hurry back. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High God. I want to take a moment and also just give a major shout out to all of those who are worshiping with us online at this 11 a.m. worship experience. Uh, we want to shout out and say welcome and thank you to Linda from Mesa, Arizona. You are worshiping with us today. None other than Brenda Tillman from Baltimore, Maryland is in the house. Miss Brenda, we love you and we praise God for you. And Commander Sergeant Major Saunders from Kuwait, we praise God for your work and for your service. We also want to celebrate Sister Dowling, who is with us from New Jersey today, and also Brenda wilson Sampson from Hawaii is with us today. We also want to lift up Diane Wilson-Winston from Snellville, Georgia, who is in the house, and Mama O from Amherst, Massachusetts. Won't you give God praise for those who are worshiping with us? Oh, I see one of our, she's still part of the village, uh, Sister Hewitt, uh, who is an airline pilot, uh, pilot for, U is it UPS or FedEx? I think you are flying around the world. Uh, you serve and you are working at uh, the Canaan Christian Church in Louisville, Kentucky. My big brother, Dr. Walter Malone, is your pastor, and we welcome you. We're delighted that you're worshiping with us today, and it was a privilege to have the opportunity to be a part of your wedding ceremony. Also, Ty Kelly from NOLA, New Orleans, Louisiana, is with us today. We welcome all of you, those who are worshiping with us today. I have some things that I want to share with everyone on today. Uh, the media team uh, will take over in a little bit, uh, but there are some folks that I want to introduce uh, to you on at this moment. I'm really excited that we have some new people who are serving on our team. I want to uh, welcome, you already know her. She is just tremendous and a phenomenal individual, none other than Minister Phyllis Bean. If you would stand, who is serving here, we welcome you back home. You've been serving at the Greater Bethesda Baptist Church, and we welcome you back to Trinity. We also are delighted uh, serving as a volunteer minister here. This wonderful brother who used to be the pastor of the St. Paul Baptist Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He is now the CEO of the not-for-profit by the Hand Club for Kids, six locations in the city of Chicago where they are walking with young children to adulthood so that they can thrive and grow on the south and west side of Chicago. I want you to welcome, he's a volunteer minister now, but this wonderful brother, Dr. Marco Tenor, we thank you so much that you are serving here at Trinity United Church of Christ. And last but not least, he served as the community outreach minister at Greater Bethesda a Church. He was recently ordained, and now he's serving over here at Trinity United Church of Christ, none other than Reverend Mose Harris. Amen. We welcome, we welcome you. We are excited that you are serving with us. I also want to share with you, is Brother Eternal Polk with us today? Eternal Polk, is Brother Polk with us today? Brother Polk, you with us today? Oh, praise God, wonderful. Brother Polk is the twice Emmy-nominated producer and director, uh, is in Chicago to promote his new film, Gaining Ground, The Fight for Black Land. The film tells the story and the plight of black farmers and their heirs to hold on to their legacy and fortunes from ancestral land ownership. The film is showing at the Black Harvest Film Festival. If you are going to the film festival, you got to get a ticket to see Gaining Ground. And we're happy to announce that the producers, including Al Roker of NBC, are considering a screening here at Trinity United Church of Christ in January, and it will be hosted by our Injustice Film Festival. 
We are so excited. We praise God for your work, for your witness, and what you are doing. And we are honored that you are worshiping with us here at Trinity United Church of Christ on today. I also want to share with you uh, that the Trinity United Church of Christ Early Childhood Center now has been renamed, many of you already know this, the Jeremiah A. Wright Jr. Early Childhood Development Center. It has been serving children for 45 years in two locations in the city of Chicago. It has received a five-star rating every year since its inception as one of the best early childhood centers in the entire city of Chicago. Hold on, did you just hear what I just said? It has received consistently a five-star rating as one of the best early childhood development centers in the city of Chicago. They strive not only to provide the highest level of education, but also the best facilities for our young people. And toward that end, uh, there is a very special, a very special fundraiser uh, that is being put together by those who support uh, the Trinity United Church of Christ Early Childhood Center, the Jeremiah A. Wright Jr. Early Childhood Development Center. And we are asking that you would simply do this, uh, that you would purchase some popcorn. Uh, there is a popcorn fundraiser going on, the Double Good Sales. All of those will begin uh, today through Thursday. Uh, all of the sales will go to the Childhood Center specifically for renovation, more specifically, the renovation of the roof. Now, they have a goal of $250,000, and all you have to do is buy some popcorn, share it on social media, let everybody know, say, it, mm -mm, it's so good, and it goes to a good cause. And so we are excited about what God is about to do in the life of our Early Childhood Development Center. I also want to take this moment and I want to welcome, we have some new members here at Trinity United Church of Christ. When I call your name, if you would be so kind as to stand uh, that we might celebrate you on today. I'm going to ask uh, that Madam Joya would stand at this moment. Uh, she plans on being a part of the Waleka Choir. Miss Joya, go ahead and raise your hand. Go ahead, do that wave right there. There you go. We welcome you to Trinity. I'm also going to ask that Lashania would stand at this moment. She plans to be a part of the greeter ministry, and we welcome you. Faye, if you would stand, Faye is going to be a part of our active senior ministry. Virginia. Miss Virginia, Virginia, if you would stand, she's going to be a part of our yoga ministry here at Trinity United Church of Christ. Sharon. Sharon Harris will be a part of our career development ministry. We welcome you. Dania Jackson will be a part, Dania, Dania will be a part of our Hurston Hughes Writers Ministry. Amen. Brother Ronald, Brother Ronald is going to be one of our greeters. Brother Ronald, we welcome you. Nadia, Miss Nadia, if you would please stand, and she will be a part of our dance ministry here at Trinity United Church of Christ. I'm going to ask that Alicia would stand at this time. Alicia, Alicia plans on being a part of Children's Church. Hey, man. Addison, Addison is going to join our rites of passage into Johnny. And Loretta, Loretta, Loretta is going to join Big Mama's house. Come on now. Amen. Come on, give it up for those who are part of Trinity United Church of Christ. We welcome you on today. Come on, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. Before I turn things over to our media team, uh, we want to wish happy birthday uh, to Mother uh, Jean uh, Doke. She turned 80 years young. Mother Jean, Mother Jean turned 80 years young today. We celebrate you. We also have someone who has a birthday. Pray, come on, get, get the hand, do the wave. There you go, get the wave going. We celebrate you as you celebrate. I hope you're gonna go out and have a good time today. 
Amen. Amen. You they, going, going out to dinner? Brunch? You going to go out to dinner? Okay. Okay. Going out to, all right. We have another birthday that we want to celebrate today. Um, she is uh, uh, the youngest of all of us. She's the youngest of all of us. She's watching right now. She's turning 93 years young, and that is none other than Miss June Campbell. Miss June Campbell, who is watching right now. 93 years young. Miss June, we love you. I want you to know she has got more energy than anybody in this sanctuary who knows anything about Miss June. And so we just want to say happy birthday. I want to turn things over to our media team before I do. Our ushers are going to prepare for our tithe and for our offering. And we want you to listen to some of the great, informa the great information that's being passed on through our media team. Amen. I am Jada McIntosh, and you're watching Trinity News Live. Here at Trinity, we develop and curate lively ministries to further serve and work for our Lord and Savior. Take these next few minutes to listen in on the upcoming events within the Trinity community. Here at Trinity, we believe that your body is a temple and that your health is well. November is Diabetes Awareness Month. Did you know that there are a million Americans that are living with diabetes and that African Americans experience higher rates of diabetes than any other racial group? According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, African Americans are 60% more likely to be diagnosed with diabetes than our white counterparts. In order to stay healthy and manage diabetes, remember to make healthy food choices. Eat plenty of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low fat dairy products. Limit the amount of meat and fried or fatty foods that you eat and avoid sugary drinks. Consider the ABCs of diabetes. A, know your A1C levels or blood sugar levels. B, blood pressure, make sure it's under control. C, cholesterol, ensure it's in check. For more information about diabetes, visit diabetes.org or talk to your local doctor. This is Logan Page reporting the trendy health and wellness segment. Remember, your health is well. Calling all Trinity UCC villagers. Trinity UCC Early Child Care Centers need your help and participation. We are partnering with Double Good Popcorn to raise funds for repairs and upgrades to our child care facilities. You can support Trinity UCC Early Child Care Centers by purchasing Double Good Popcorn on their pop-up shop, Sunday, November 5th through Thursday, November 9th. We are also looking for fundraising ambassadors to join our mission and serve as a beacon of light and hope for the children and communities we serve. To register as a Trinity UCC Early Child Care Ambassador, visit tinyurl.com slash ambassador child care fundraising. Together, we can make miracles happen, one day at a time. We are counting on you. Trinity United Church of Christ is always in the heart of the community, ever seeking to win the community's heart. Trinity Family our prison, career development, and IT ministries will host a variety of workshops providing digital skill building to assist in optimizing your job opportunities and to help you stand out in the crowd because, honey, you will. So go ahead and learn how to be proficient with Google's cloud-based solutions and more. Those interested can register at the link below. And remember, it's linktr.ee slash justice work. Operation Share 2023 needs your help. So please drop off uninspired canned goods such as corn, green beans, and jiffy mix for Thanksgiving baskets until Sunday, November 12th. Also consider adopting a family by making a $40 gift above your tithes and offerings today. Trinity family and friends, we are collecting toiletry items such as travel size, lotion and soap, Vaseline, sanitary items, or a $10 restaurant gift card to share with a few of our friends in need. These items can be dropped off at the church Tuesday through Sunday during regular business hours. This is Marlisa Stalling reporting our community engagement segment. And remember that you are the hands and feet of Christ. Save the date for our 62nd church anniversary. 
We are celebrating our powerful and prophetic branch of Zion, Trinity United Church of Christ, on Sunday, December 3rd, 2023, at both services. As a proud member of TUCC, I invite all Trinity members and friends to join me and commit to giving either $0.62, $6.20, $62, or $6,200 above your tithes and offerings. We are doing this in honor of our liberating and Christ-centered ministry that has been impacting the community for 62 years and will continue to bless generations to come. Mark your calendars. On Christmas Eve, Sunday, December 24th, we will have one in-person worship service at 9.30 a.m. and an online service at 6 p.m. Then join us on Christmas Day at 7.30 a.m. for worship. I am Jada McIntosh, and this is your Trinity News for November 5th. Stay tuned for upcoming events and stories involving the Trinity community. Remember to stay blessed and live out loud for Christ. Thank you for watching. We, the Village of Trinity United Church of Christ, believe that Jesus Christ is our liberating Savior who calls us to be unapologetic of our relationship with God and unashamed of our culture as we prophetically stand with those who have their backs against the wall. Today, your gifts of tithes and offering will allow this work to continue as we strive to feed those who are hungry, minister to those behind prison cell walls, and develop our young people to serve Christ and more. There are multiple ways for you to support the ministry of Trinity with your tithes and offerings. You may give through our Secure Give application. Text to give by dialing 855-781-8384 or you may use our cash app, dollar sign Trinity UCC. You can also use our website, trinitychicago.org. Also, our First Fruits Direct Draft program allows you to make your church a priority. If you prefer to mail your gift, simply send your tithe or offering to 400 West 95th Street. Thank you for your radical generosity in support of Trinity United Church of Christ, the greatest church this side of the Jordan.
want to just thank God for the Sanctuary Choir. I just want to thank God for our music ministry blessing us today. I mean, y'all are going in. You're taking no prisoners whatsoever. Amen. Amen. Uh, before we go to God in prayer, I, I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you to, to three wonderful young people that you see on the Trinity News. Uh, Madam Jada and Logan and Marlisa, they love what they do, and they are getting training for what they plan on doing in the future. So when you see them on NBC, ABC, CBS, know that they had their start here at Trinity United Church of Christ, that we are preparing them now for what they will be doing in the future and we are so grateful for our media ministry opening the door for our young adults to actually practice in the area that they are interested in of their future and present vocation. And so we are just very grateful and it is a wonderful thing to see them on screen and I'm excited uh, because eventually all three of them are going to be on some show at some point in the future. And I just want to speak that over their lives right now of what God's going to do with Jada, with Logan, and Marlisa, that they are going to be a blessing in this nation, and they are going to be deeply rooted with excellence, with the Spirit of God, with a level of integrity, and they can walk into any space and say, I'm unashamed and unapologetic. Amen. And so we are grateful for that. So let us go to God in prayer at this moment. Uh, with our heads bowed and our hearts open, uh, we go to God at this moment. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. And try me and see if there is any destructive way in me. When you discover what does not belong, O oh God, I ask that you would remove it from me and cast it into the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west that it may never return again. I recognize I am not worthy to preach your word. I ask, O oh God, that you would allow your word to go forth and not return void in spite of this broken vessel. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Holy Spirit, do thy will, do thy will, Holy Spirit. In the mighty, magnificent, awesome, majestic, powerful, and saving name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we collectively pray. And the people of God who love God may say, Amen. Amen. I want to invite you at this time, it will also be on the screen, but we invite you to take a look in your Bible in Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. We have been going for the last several weeks, moving through Exodus chapter 20, looking at uh, what we say in English is the Ten Commandments in the Judaic tradition are called the utterances, the ten utterances of God. Uh, and we would invite you to find Exodus chapter 20. And just this one, this one simple verse. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. For the Lord your, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses God's name. Another translation, you shall not wrongly use the name of the Lord your God. Another translation is do not use God's name irreverently. Do not use God's name irreverently. Another translation, OM3 translation, stop putting God's name in it when God had nothing to do with it. Stop putting God's name in it when God had nothing to do with it. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of God's holy name. I want to let you know before we begin, uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, uh, we have set up a screen to my left to your right. For those who are Spanish speakers, we have a screen that will translate our worship experience in Spanish. 
So we want to make sure that those who are Spanish speakers, uh, that you are comfortable in this house. And this is God's house, and we want you comfortable in God's house. We want you comfortable. Let me say it again. We want you comfortable in God's house. Amen. Amen. Uh, we want to place a tag on this text today and to deal with this simple idea as we continue along this journey of this series of how to keep these commandments. We want to deal with this idea of what is in a name. What is in a name? And we would invite you just to flank us with your prayers at this moment collectively at this time. <clears throat> what is in a name? There are varied names of God that when you read throughout Scripture, there is not one singular name, but there are a variety of names that speak to the essence of God, or I should say the character of God. Elohim, meaning creator. El Shaddai, which is still translated a variety of ways today. One translation from Hebrew is mountain. That God is a mountain that cannot be moved. Another translation of El Shaddai is, is, is breast. That literally the nourishment of humanity and all creation comes at the breast of God. And then the more popular translation of El Shaddai is the Almighty, that God is the Mighty One. Or the name Jehovah, which meaning the self-existent one. Adonai, simply meaning master. Jehovah Rapha, my God is the healer. Jehovah Cherub, that my God holds the sword. Jehovah Elyon, that our God, God is the most high. Or Jehovah Ezra, meaning that our God is help. Or Jehovah Gibber, meaning that our God is a mighty warrior. Or Jehovah Goel, that our God is the redeemer. Jehovah Ashfel, meaning that the Lord God is the only judge. Jehovah Ahosnu, that our God is our maker. Or Jehovah Jireh, that our God is our provider. Jehovah Kere Yishi, uh, our God is the horn of our salvation. Or Jehovah Magan, that our God is is the shield. But, but there's one particular name within the Hebraic tradition that in, uh, in English, in uh, the Protestant tradition, we attempt to pronounce. It is the, uh, the name Yahweh. Uh, but really, you can't pronounce Yahweh as a word because it has no vowels. But the best way to really uh, pronounce it is just be silent or, get this, according to uh, Father Richard Rohr, he says that when you take all of the vowels out, and if you try to say this name of God, the only thing that you can do is go, <sighs> in other words, all you can do is make a breath sound. The sound you made when you were born, and the sound you'll make before you die is the only sound that connects with who God is. It's not even a word, it's just a breath. That we, we, we have a God, we serve a God that has no name and at the same time has many names. Our God is unknowable and knowable. In other words, our God is an unknowable, knowable God. The true name of God cannot be uttered nor pronounced. Human chords cannot pronounce the name of God. If we were actually given the name of God, we don't have the words pronunciation nor 
is our, our vocal cords able to make the sound? that appropriately communicate God. So sometimes if you want to talk about God, you just got to hush your mouth. <laughs> Yet God can be heard. God can be heard in the laughter of children. God can be heard in the song of the sparrow. God can be heard in the roar of the ocean. God can be heard in the buzz of the bee, the whisper of the wind, ah, the sound of the lion. And God can be seen in the smile of an elder, the eyes of a child, the spark of a flame, the light of the stars, the rising of the sun. And if you put your hand upon your heart, you may get a sound from that beat of your heart, the sound of, very, of God. Name, speech, utterance have power. The name of a person is important, and the renaming sometimes of a person is incredibly important to understand uh, the essence and what is in a name. Names are important. And for those of you who were born with a particular name, uh, that especially in the African-American community, people in your family will change your name. You got a government name, and then you got the name that your family calls you. And those who are in your family can call you that name. But those who not in your family, you're not going to answer to that name because they don't have the relationship with you to be able to call you by that name. If I may, if I may explain how this operates, uh, that my name is Otis Moss, but, but if I am in Cleveland, Ohio, at my home church, the Olivet Institutional Baptist Church, where I grew up on East 89th and Quincy in Cleveland, Ohio. If I, if I am there, uh, my, my name is not, is not Otis. My name uh, is not Reverend Moss. Uh, I will be called Little Otis. No, you got to say it right. Not Little, Little Otis. Got to have the right pronunciation around that. And, and at that moment, at that moment, I know that I'm home and I'm around particular elders who have known me in the words of my Aunt Clarice since I was knee high to an aunt. Uh, for example, for example, if Monica is with her friends, or with her friends, all of a sudden she becomes Monty B, not Monica, Monty B. Uh, if Michaela, if Michaela is around certain people, it becomes MK or Berkey is what her uncle will call her. Or Elijah will become Eli. Uh, because all of these deal with connections of love and relationships with people, but not everybody can call you these names because you got to have a relationship to be able to call these names. And that's why the context of names matter. I'm reminded, I'm reminded that when we lived in Augusta, Georgia, uh, in, at Tabernacle Baptist Church where we served, uh, we did a pulpit swap with a church uh, known as the First Baptist Church of Augusta, Georgia. Now, for those who may not be familiar with how things work in the South, if you ever hear the term First Baptist, it's usually a predominantly uh, a white church, and they usually do not have relationships with other churches for, for whatever reason, usually historic reasons. Uh, but I had a great relationship with the pastor by the name of Timothy Owens, a progressive, wonderful uh, gentleman, and we did a pulpit swap. He preached at Tabernacle, and I preached at First Baptist. And so going to uh, First Baptist, several deacons uh, came with me. And after I finished, there was a deacon from First Baptist, First Baptist of Augusta, Georgia. This is the church where the Southern Baptist Convention started. Uh, this was a church that the Southern Baptist Convention started. I want you to get the context here. And so after I finished preaching, uh, there was a deacon from First Baptist who walked up and said, Otis, you did such a great job preaching. And there was a deacon who was with me. His name was Hewlin Johnson. He was six, six foot five inches tall. Uh, he was a World War II veteran and was a master sergeant. And he was one of those people that had a deep voice and he can't whisper. He can't, there are certain people that do not know how to whisper whatsoever. Their whisper sounds like they are just being loud. And when he heard this deacon call me by my first name, he then rolled up with his six foot five, 265 pound self, rolled up on him and said this, tried to whisper, but could not. He said, 
you may call my pastor pastor, you may call him reverend, you may call him minister, but don't you ever call him by his first name. Because from his perspective and context, he remembers when he was a child that as an African-American man, that if you wanted to disrespect him, you never called him by his full name. You called him by his first name. And it was, as we called him, Sarge. That's one of the reasons he loved the military. He said, even the most racist of racists, when I walked in the room, had to call me Master Sergeant. He said, I liked being called Master Sergeant, especially by folk I know couldn't stand me whatsoever. You've got to know the context in reference to the names uh, that you speak. For example, if you are walking with your boo, you, you, the person that you deeply care about and love, and you are all booed up next to each other, and you have your little sweet boo names that y'all call each other, you know, whatever it is, a honey, baby, whatever, whatever it is. But if you are walking down the street and a stranger calls you that name, you have some major explaining to do. Because context matters. When we were in Ghana, we found out the power of names. Uh, we met a gentleman by the name of Kwame, meaning that he was born on Saturday. But it also is a con name, a con name that means father of life. Uh, when you hear the name Halle Selassie in Ethiopia, a uh, Halle meaning, uh, meaning power of, and Selassie meaning trinity, you put it together, meaning a function out of the power of the trinity. When you hear somebody's name by the name of Nzinga, it simply means a beloved person because names have a meaning and people were not named arbitrarily but to connect with their destiny. And, and as African Americans, linguists have found that we have even brought, and brought our Africanisms to America. That there is even a reason why we have certain names or names pop up within our vocabulary. Because there are certain sounds uh, that we like and didn't even know why we like them. The ah and the da and the uh sounds. Just like a Monica, a Regina, a Latanda, a Patricia, or an Isaiah, Elijah, or a Jeremiah, that, that sound goes all the way back to West Africa, and our ears are still attuned to the sounds of our ancestors. And names have context, but here that I have to give you this, that names also have the power to bless and to curse. You see, your speech has greater authority than your fists. The bruises of a fight are temporary, but the names may last for generations. Those who are supposed to love us sometimes, they end up cursing because they utilize names that end up resting upon our spirit because speech has power and has authority. And many do not even know any better to, to let you know that to speak life is a liberating act that many have never developed the skills of affirmation that never learned whatsoever uh, how to affirm someone that literally the words you speak uh, change what happens internally in your body Many have never learned the power of acceptance or compassion, and many have even never been told that you are magnificent and you are wonderful. Let, let me help you out. When I was talking with the deacons yesterday, we were at the deacons meeting, I brought two deacons forward, and I said, I, I want you to say some affirming words, to say that you are a child of God, to say that you are magnificent, that you are wonderfully made, uh, that you have a great destiny, to say all of these affirming words. Now put your arm out. And I tried to take two fingers and push that arm down. And I couldn't push the arm down. I said, now say some negative words. And they said some negative words over and over. I walked up to the same arm and it just went down so very quickly. I said, the words you speak 
activate things in your body, that you've got to be careful about the names that you call yourself, and you've got to be careful about the names you answer to. And I'm here to let you know that if no one has ever told you, if you never heard it before in your life, if no one was ever to affirm you, but I stop by here to let you know that you are a child of God, that you are a child of the King, that you are magnificent, you are beautiful, you are wonderful, you are amazing. When God created you, you are the only you that God has ever designed. And when God was done, God stepped back and said, mm, look what I created. And sometimes you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am a child of God. I have been created in a beautiful way. And with the help of Deacon Mentor, I say it this way, you are a child of African descent and divine imagination created with genius and inherent ingenuity stretching from the Nile to the Mississippi. You are not some media stereotype created by some false racialized imagination. You are a sacred creation created by the inspiration of our God, a God of love, your being, your very being your biological construction is designed with purpose you were created to lead and were created to design to do great things you were created to develop and create and transform this community you were created by the creator who created you to do amazing things I stop by here to let you know I want to put a word in your spirit that will transform your body is there anyone in here that you know you are a child of the most high God you have been created with a purpose you have been designed to do great things that God did not do something arbitrarily with you matter of fact turn to your neighbor and say you are a blessing and you are a blessing because when someone hears that it will bless their spirit and their soul <laughs> to speak life is a liberating act to speak life will change the way you function. That is why when Viola Davis in the help had that little child on her lap, she said, you is kind, you is sweet, you is important, and I want you to know the Spirit has been trying to tell you, you is kind, you is sweet, you is important, you are wonderful, you are beautiful, God knew you before you were born, before you can contemplate and handle and deal with the names of God and the relationship with God, you've got to deal with the names you call yourself. Let me help you out. We end up in a culture today where we have names that we accept. I'm not going to utter those names, but there are names that people hear all the time and they accept those names. But, but if negative names affect your body, what happens when an entire generation accepts a name? What happens when an entire culture accepts a name that has been framed not by your mama, daddy, or your ancestors, but was framed by colonizers that want you to have a ceiling on who you can be? I'm not uttering any of these names, but there are some names we'll go to a party and we will utter them. There are some names that will play in our ear on a song and we'll say it's all right. There are names that we will hear if it's got a good beat next to it, we'll say that name is all right. But the last time I checked my Bible, God didn't create any of these names. God did not make you that name. But yet we are answering to names that God never created. And you will put a limitation on your destiny if you allow somebody else to name you. Here is the thing. It's not what someone calls you. It's what you answer to. And stop answering to names that God never gave you in the first place. I'm not saying the name. I'm not calling the name because I don't want to put that name in the atmosphere, but I'm here to let you know you are a child of the King. You are a child of God. You are a great, magnificent creation. Stop answering to names that have nothing to do with your destiny. Names have power. And that is why within this scripture, it says do not use God's name in the wrong manner. 
Do not use it irreverently because God's name, God's name shall, shall create and shall have reverence. I cannot, I cannot speak the name only as an attribute. I have to say what God is like because I really don't even have the full name of who God is. Because there is no name that I can utter that gives the full totality of God. I can just tell you what God is like. I can tell you that my God is like a friend at midnight. I can tell you that my God sticks closer than any brother. I can tell you that my God steps in when the world steps out. I can tell you that my God opens doors that no man can shut, shuts doors that no man can open. When doors can open, my God opens up windows and pours out blessings. My God is a bridge over troubled water, but he's more than a bridge. He's also a heart fixer, and he's not just a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. My God's not just a mind regulator. My ancestors say a bri he's a rock in a weary land but he's not just a rock in a weary land he's also the rose of Sharon the God that I serve is more than all of the things that I've said but is all the things that I've said beyond my vocabulary but at the same time is like some of the things that I am stating that there should be reverence that when you think about God's name there should be reverence but the other thing about why you are not you are not you are not to use God's name wrongfully you should also understand that God's name uh, shall cause humility mm. it will create humility because when I think about the goodness of God all of a sudden I have to start being quiet because as I'm thinking about all that God has done and I begin to go through the chapters of my past and I see that in every footnote and a highlight, God was present. It causes humility to realize that I didn't do this myself. It was God who took me out. It was God who brought me through. It was God who put a roof over my head. It was God who put clothes on my back. It was God who was able to pay bills when I didn't have anything to be able to pay. It was God when I was on the edge of snatch insanity, snatched me back. God was able to do all of these things and it creates a sense of humility. That's why Sometimes, as a result of this, I just simply have to have within the Pentecostal tradition. Sometimes, you just have to have a little praise break. Because I've been looking over my life, thinking about it doesn't make any sense. I shouldn't be behind this pulpit. I shouldn't be preaching up here. But I know that it's the grace and mercy of God that has allowed me to come to this point in my life. And it causes a sense of humility. And that is why every once in a while, you have to take a little break and begin to utter sounds and not words. Uh, you missed that. God's name causes reverence, should be reverent. God's name should create humility. But the other thing is that God's name, sometimes the only thing you can do is you just make a sound. Can't even say a word. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Because I make these sounds because there are some things that can only be communicated through sound. You see, my, 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 Michael is over here at this moment that many people don't even know why we do certain things within the black tradition. That if I come over here by the organ, that many times the uh, organist will try and find out what key the preacher is. What key am I in? When I say God is good, he'll find my key. But some of you are trying to say, well, that is just a motive.
Uh, that is just being done because it is a part of a traditional liturgy because it is simply emotional. No, you've got to understand that this is an ancient call and forth and back and forth because what is happening is because the words that I'm pronouncing, you see there is a moment when the organ begins to speak that the organ can say things that my words cannot. <laughs> the organ is saying stuff that it's not possible for me to pronounce. And this is a tradition that has come all the way from West Africa. You see, this didn't start up here in uh, Chicago. You see, if I go down the Mississippi River and make my way to Mississippi, you will find the same type of cadence, the same type of hoop, with the, with, the, with the organ speaking back and forth. And when the organ starts talking back, and then the preacher starts talking. That's when the congregation joins in. That means that the organ talks and says something that we can't say in human speech. And then the preacher responds, trying to communicate that which is sacred and divine, but my words aren't good enough to be able to communicate it. And then the people begin to respond between the conversation going back and forth. And then a third party is added into the conversation. And this tradition comes all the way from what was known as the transatlantic slave trade because now they are studying and found out that there was a sound that we used to make when we were in the hull of the ship it was not a word it was a sound that we made and that sound was a sound that said simply though we're going through hell we know somebody who can take us out of this hellish situation it was a sound that we made and that sound if you make your way to Mali West Africa when you you hear the griot and the griot is telling the story of the people you will find out that there are people who are humming that sound like the organ because they are responding saying that there are some words you cannot pronounce that the only thing you can do is make a sound and then as the people begin to respond with the sound then some people then join in and begin to respond to the sound by saying yes Lord what God is doing God is moving and God is blessing so I stop by here to let you know is there any Anyone in here can you respond to the conversation that me and the organ are having can you respond to the conversation of what's going on right now because when you respond you are speaking about the, the movement of God in your life I know you've heard the sounds but is there anyone in here can you respond and say I know what the Lord can do I know how my God can bless me and the more the organ talks the more the preacher shouts and the more the organ talks the more the preacher shouts and the more that the people communicate is there anybody up in here can you respond to the ancestral sounds of those who were held who were in chains but they kept breaking out because of the goodness of God good day may God bless you but is there anybody in here can you open up your mouth knowing there's power in your voice there's power in your sound God's name should be reverent God's name should cause humility Sometimes you can't even say anything about God. You just need an organist to complete what you can't say with your words. But can I give you one more thing? God's name is reverent. God's name should cause humility. And sometimes you don't even have the words to communicate what God is doing. But let me give you something and put America on notice. God's name shall not be placed upon ungodly human acts. 
stop putting God's name in it when God had nothing to do with it. Stop saying it was God in 1619 that enslaved over 10 million people. God didn't have anything to do with it. God had nothing to do with the trail of tears. God had nothing to do with the massacre at Tulsa. God had nothing to do with the Holocaust. God had nothing to do with the Palestinian Nekba. God had nothing to do with racism, sexism, homophobia. Stop putting this stuff on God. God had nothing to do with that. I'm here to let you know we serve a God that serves the people, that loves the people who have their backs against the wall. And what's unique about humanity is that we're always getting it wrong. God sent prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet and we still messed it up. But thanks be to God. God said, I kept sending you people to see if you'd get it right. So God said, since you can't get it right with them, I'm going to go myself. So God put on human flesh and stepped down through 40 and two generations, was born as a little child in a place called Bethlehem. And now I can call his name. I can call the name of the one who has set me free. I can call Elohim. I can call Adonai. I can call Jehovah. I can call Jehovah Rapha. But there's another name I need to call. It's a name of power. There's a name. I love to call this name. There's healing in this name. This name will turn your nightmares into dreams, force demons to flee. This name renews my strength, empowers my spirit. This name causes me to shout when I'm broken, weep when I'm joyful, when I call his name. I'm emancipated when I call his name. I'm set free, I call his name. I pray in his name. I'm healed in the name. I'm blessed by the name. I'm delivered by the name. I'm set free by the name. I'm mended by the name. I'm cured by the name. I'm released by the name. I'm emancipated by the name. I'm fortified by the name. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing his word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on all the earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Good day. May the Lord bless you. Anybody here? Can you say the name? Can you call the name? Can you shout the name? Say the name! Say the name! Say the name! Say his name! Yeah! Yeah! Say his name!
Say his name. 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 Say his name with me. Can you say? Say his name. Can you call? Call his name. Can you shout? Shout his name. Call his name. Shout his name. Say his name. Bless his name. Do you know his name? Call his name. What is in the name? in your spirit and there are moments when you cannot even say the name that all you can do is just make a sound we give God praise give God, thanks. Say his name. The name. The name. What is in a name? That there are multiple names of God. But those names only say what God is like. Nothing encapsulates the totality of who God is. Whatever name you say still doesn't encapsulate the totality of God. But I can say that there is one particular name that I love so very much. I'm blessed by this name. I love this name. How I love Jesus. How I. Why? Because he first loved me when we were unlovable. God said, I love you in spite of when we were digging our own ditch and our own grave. Jesus says, I love you in spite of you. When we were doing damage to other human beings, Jesus says, I love you even at your lowest point. As you'll find out, I don't give up on my people. the church is open right now there is a name I love to hear I love we welcome you to be a part of Trinity United Church of Christ we welcome you to be a part of this village, this community that we love, we love, we love, we love Jesus. No other name. We welcome you. God bless you. This is an invitation for you to be a part of this community that we call Trinity United Church of Christ. Oh, 
How I love Jesus. We welcome you. We celebrate with you. Oh, give God praise. Come on, 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 come on. We celebrate with you. Praise God, praise God. Yes. Oh, how I love Jesus. We celebrate with you. We praise God for you. And I want you to do something for me at just for this moment. I'm going to ask that you would just close your eyes as the musicians continue to bless us, as the choir continues to bless us, just, just for a moment. I just have a, a question that I want to raise. Every eye closed across the sanctuary. If you want to take a step and connect with Jesus, become a part of a family, a, a village, and I know you're a little bit nervous because people are looking at you. If you want to take that step but you're a little afraid, I'm going to ask that you would just raise your hand and no one is looking at you. If you want to become a part of this community, we welcome you right now. If your hand is raised, I'm going to just ask that you're the only one. You just open your eyes and there'll be a deacon who will assist you that you can make your way down this aisle. If you want to connect and commit, we welcome you right now. We praise God for those who've made a decision to be a part of this community, a part of this family. We praise God for you. We celebrate you today. We celebrate you today. We celebrate you today. We celebrate with you this day. We give glory unto God. We celebrate those that are making their way from the balcony right now. We celebrate with you right now. We celebrate in joy of what God is doing and how God is doing it in your life. And give God praise for how God is moving in such a magnificent way. And we welcome you and we celebrate with you. God is calling you. We celebrate with you right now. We celebrate with you right at this moment. We celebrate. We praise God. We celebrate right now. We give God glory. We give God praise. We celebrate with you at this moment. We celebrate with you. Praise God. We celebrate with you at this moment. We give God all of the glory. We give God all of the praise. We welcome you to be a part of this community. Come on, come on, come on. Give God praise. We celebrate. We celebrate with you. We praise God for all of those who have come made a decision today we we want to celebrate with you and we want to welcome you
give God praise for those who have come today. We thank God for you making the step today. We make a commitment to you. Your, your family has expanded. This is a village. All these people around here, the, these are your peeps now. These are your peeps. These are your people. And uh, we are excited for you, for what God is doing in your life. That there are things that are hidden, that are about to be revealed of how God is going to bless you in unique ways. Now, we're going to welcome you in Trinity style. Afterwards, you're going to follow Dr. Sue. This is Dr. Sue. Dr. Sue is going to be your contact, your contact. So Dr. Sue Ladd is going to connect with you and make sure uh, that you are connected with your ministry, with our new members program, all of that. So we're going to welcome you in a special way, and then you're going to follow Dr. Sue to the back to get additional information. I want y'all to know right on this road, y'all doubly blessed because you're next to Mama Lewis. You're next to Mama Lewis right now. She, she's something else. She's something else. She's something else. Amen. But we want to extend our hands to you and simply say welcome to Trinity, the greatest church this side of the Jordan. Amen. Won't you welcome our friends? I'm going to ask that you all would stand. Take a stand. And if you would follow. Oh, Dr. Sue's got her stuff. You got to, oh, Yeah, you got to take the tambourines out. There we go. All right. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High God. I want to take this moment and we want to prepare our hearts as we prepare for our Holy Communion moment at this time. Uh, that our hearts and our minds may be focused upon Christ at this moment. We go to God in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the blessing of this holy communion, this small table, but yet it is big enough for all. May you bless the wine and bless the bread. They serve as a reminder and a symbol of the sacrifice of Jesus. And we thank you for this moment that we are able to to come together. May you anoint this table. May you anoint this meal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. And the people of God who love God may say, Amen. I want to ask our ministers to join me at the communion table. may stand together and that we may recite our confession of sins collectively that will come up on the screen that you might recite with us. For those who are online, I'm going to invite you to recite at home or wherever you may be at this time. Some of you are in the airport waiting for a flight. We just appreciate you worshiping with us and you're at your gate right now. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Let us go and recite our confession of sins. Almighty, most merciful Father, we come before you acknowledging our sins, our shortcomings, and our breaking of our covenant with you. Not only have we done things we ought not to have done, said things we ought not to have said, left undone so many things we ought to have done, and been silent when we should have witnessed for you. Not only guilty of that, O oh Lord, but we have closed our eyes and pretended not to see the injustices, racism, the evil which pervade our everyday lives. We have shut our ears and pretended not to hear the cries for liberation which come from the lips, lives, and the hearts of the oppressed, even our own black brothers and sisters. Forgive us, O oh Lord, renew our courage and faith, Keep us ever mindful thy great sacrifice. Hear us, we beseech thee, as we come to you in love and worship, giving your name praise forevermore. 
The question is asked, how are we forgiven? How does that happen? Is it anything that we do? No, it's not what we do. It is something known as grace. Grace is unmerited, unwarranted acts of love that flow from God. It is what God does, not what we do. We are all beneficiaries of God's grace. For God so loved the world that God gave God's only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the basis of our forgiveness. And we have confessed our sins corporately. You may be seated that we go and confess our sins privately. What do you hold on to at this moment in your life? that God has been whispering to you, let it go. Before you partake in this sacred meal, who is the one you have not reconciled with that you still hold deep, deep resentment in your heart? Who is the one that you are jealous of and insecure around. Let it go before we partake in this meal. Let us pray. Lord God, may you release us of thoughts. May you release us of the actions that we have taken. Forgive us for the way that we have acted towards you and towards your creation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. And the people of God who love God may say, Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you.
Jesus took the bread and broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. Likewise, the cup of wine after the meal. The wine symbolizes in the blood that was shed for the remission and redemption of sin. Take and drink all of it. Let us pray once again. Lord God, we thank you for the blessing of this holy meal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. I want to invite everyone to stand, and I want to ask, along with our new family members, uh, that Dr. Marco, Minister Phyllis, and Reverend Mose would make their way to the middle aisle that you would greet them on your way out and just tell them welcome to the family. And if you are able to exit through the middle aisle, you know, we ask that you would exit from the middle aisle to greet our new family members. But there is a closing prayer that I wanna offer on today. It was written by Reverend Jan Richardson that I wanna pass on to everyone. It's a beautiful piece that in these moments where we are witnessing the kind of atrocities and horror across the globe, uh, whether it is in the Gaza Strip or in the Democratic Republic of the Congo or Haiti, East St. Louis, South or West, or North Chicago, LA, Atlanta, or Philadelphia. I simply offer this closing prayer at this moment. It's entitled, How the Light, How the Light Comes. And with your eyes open, I ask this. I cannot tell you how the light comes. What I know is that it is more ancient than imagining that it travels across an astounding expanse to reach us, that it loves searching out what is hidden, what is lost, what is forgotten, or in peril or in pain. That is how a fondness, that it has a fondness for the body, for finding its way toward flesh, for tracing the edges of form, for shining forth through the eye, the hand, the heart. I cannot tell you how the light comes but that it does, that it will, that it works its way into the deepest dark that enfolds you, though it may seem long ages in coming or arrive in the shape you do not foresee. And so, may we this day turn ourselves toward it. May we lift our faces and let it find us. May we bend our bodies to follow the arc it makes. May we open and open more and open still to the blessed light that comes. May the road, may it rise to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sunlight of Jesus Christ grace your cheek, and may rain gently fall upon your field. And may God keep you in the hollow of God's hand until we meet again. Go in peace this day. God bless you. Amen. Greet someone before Jesus you leave. Is the light. Light Give them a handshake or a hug. Jesus is the light. Light of the world. Jesus is the light. Light of the world. He's ever shining in my soul. Jesus is the light. Light of the world. Jesus is the light. Light of the world, Jesus is the light. Light of the world, He's ever shining in my soul. Oh, Jesus, Jesus is the light.